Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a complete course for the CCNP NCORE, Enterprise Core exam. In this lab, we'll verify some of the RSTP topology change processes that we covered in the lecture video. This is the same topology that we used in the lecture video. As the lab instructions say, the switch to switch for link is disabled at the beginning of the lab. The port role labels here indicate each port's role when all links are up, but that isn't the case at the moment. So we're going to enable the switch to switch for link in this lab and verify the results. But first, make sure to enable debug spanning tree events on each switch before beginning the lab. We've been enabling this in basically every STP lab so far, because it shows a lot of useful information for understanding how STP works. I enabled the debug before recording this video, but if you're doing the lab yourself, make sure to enable the debug. So in step one, we'll first verify how topology changes flush a switch's MAC address table. We'll do that by pinging between PC1 and PC2, which are represented by these two routers. Then we'll check switch 3's MAC address table, initiate a topology change, and check the MAC address table again to see which addresses were flushed. First, let's ping PC2 from PC1. PC2's IP address is 10.0.0.12, so on PC1, issue ping 10.0.0.12. So once the ping goes through, take a look at Switch 3's MAC address table to see where it learned PC2's MAC address. Show MAC address table. So this MAC address learned on G01, ending in 054B, is PC2's. This one learned on G02 is PC1's. And how about this one learned on G00? It's switch 1's. Switch 3 learns switch 1's MAC address because it receives BPDUs from switch 1. So because the switch 2 switch 4 link is currently down, the switch 3 switch 4 link is active. Now let's enable the switch 2 switch 4 link and observe the effect on switch 3's MAC address table. I'll go on switch 2 first. Conf T, interface G01, no shutdown and then switch 4. Conf T, interface G00, no shutdown. So switch 4 will initialize G00, and then sync with switch 2, making G00 its new root port. Let's take a look at switch 3's MAC address table now to see which MAC addresses were flushed. Show MAC address table. So switch 3 still knows switch 1's MAC address, learned on G00, and PC1's MAC address learned on G02. But it flushed PC2's MAC address from G01 after receiving a topology change BPDU. Remember the rule. After receiving a TC BPDU, the switch will flush all MAC addresses learned on non-edge ports, except those learned on the port that received the TC BPDU. In this case, it's G01 only. G00 received the TC BPDU, which was sent by switch 4 out of G00 and forwarded by switch 2 and switch 1. And G02 is an edge port. Think about the purpose of flushing MAC addresses like this. If switch 3 didn't flush MAC addresses learned on G01, it would still think that it can reach PC2 via G01. So if PC1 tried to ping PC2 again, switch 3 would forward PC1's frames out of G01 but switch 4 would simply drop the frames because switch 4 G01 is an alternate port. Flushing MAC addresses learned on G01 forces switch 3 to flood frames addressed to PC2, allowing PC1's pings to reach PC2 and allowing switch 3 to relearn PC2's MAC address on its G00 interface instead. Let's test by pinging from PC1 again. Ping 10.0.0.12. Okay, the ping works, and how about switch 3's MAC address table now? Show MAC address table. Now, switch 3 has learned PC2's MAC address on G00. Okay, let's return to the lab notes for step 2, which asks which interfaces switch 4 sends TCBPDUs out of when G00 enters the forwarding state, and also asks how many BPDUs it sends. So before checking, Let's consider what we learned in the lecture video. When an RSTP switch experiences a topology change, 
It sends TCBPDUs out of all non-edge designated ports and its root port. So when switch 4 G00 comes up, it becomes switch 4's root port, and G01 is an alternate port. G02 is designated, but it's an edge port, so it shouldn't send TCBPDUs. Therefore, switch 4 should only send them out of G00. To verify, you can start packet captures on each of switch 4's links before initiating the topology change. I already did that before recording the video, and I have included the packet captures with the lab files for this video, so you can check them out or take your own captures when you do the lab. So let's look at each capture, starting with the capture for the G02 link. All that we see here are standard BPDUs that switch 4 sends every 2 seconds. Let's click on one of them, expand the spanning tree protocol section, expand the BPDU flag section, and as you can see, the topology change flag is not set. I can scroll through all of these BPDUs, but the output is exactly the same. No topology change. Next, let's look at what happened on the G01 link. This time, notice that three BPDUs look different. These are TC BPDUs, as shown here. RST means it's a rapid spanning tree protocol BPDU, and TC means the topology change flag is set. But these TC BPDUs weren't sent by switch 4, they were sent by switch 3. Notice that the source MAC address is the same for all of the BPDUs. The regular one sent by switch 3 every 2 seconds, and these three with the TC flag set. So as expected, switch 4 didn't send BPDUs out of this port either. Finally, let's see the packet capture on the G00 link. This time, there are a couple of different source MAC addresses. Let me highlight the TC BPDU sent by switch 4 by right-clicking on one, selecting Colorize Conversation, Ethernet, and I'll make it red. So these three TC BPDUs were sent by switch 4 when the topology change occurred, and the other BPDUs are the standard BPDUs that switch 2 sends every 2 seconds. So we've answered both questions. Switch 4 only sent TC BPDUs out of G00, and it sent 3. In the lecture video, I said that the switch sets the TC flag for the duration of the TC while timer, which is twice the hello time, so you might expect the switch to only send 2 TC BPDUs, but actually it sends 3. If you look at the time of each of these BPDUs, notice the second one is very soon after the first, and then the third is 2 seconds after the second. It seems that the switch sends a TC BPDU immediately after the topology change, and then two more are sent according to the hello timer schedule, 2 seconds apart. Okay, let's return to the lab notes for step 3, a short step that says to disable and re-enable switch 4G02, and asks if a topology change is triggered. Well, what do you think? Switch 4 G02 is an edge port. I have enabled portfast on it, so it shouldn't trigger a topology change. Let's try. On switch 4, interface G02, shutdown. Of course, in RSTP, any interface going down won't trigger a topology change. But what about this interface going up? Let's see. No shutdown. So it initializes G02 and makes it designated but there are no messages about a topology change. As we covered in the lecture video, activity on edge ports doesn't affect the topology among the switches, so there's no need to inform other switches about edge ports going up or down. That's all for step 3. Now let's take a look at step 4, which says to verify RSTP's uplink fast and backbone fast-like functionalities. First, it says to disable switch for G00, and confirm how long it takes for G01 to enter the forwarding state. Let's try that now. It should be basically immediate. Interface G00, shutdown. After issuing the command, there are a few debug messages. Root port G00 going down, G01 is now root port, and generating TC trap for port G01, meaning G01 entered the forwarding state. So, as expected, it's basically immediate. In STP, this can be achieved with uplink fast, 
but this functionality is built into Rapid STP. Okay, I'll re-enable G00 with no shutdown. Let's look at the second part of step four now. It says to disable switch to G00 and confirm how long it takes for switch to G01 to become its new root port in the forwarding state. So when we disable switch to G00, switch to loses its only active path to the root bridge. Switch 4 G00 is a root port. It normally doesn't forward BPDUs to switch 2. So switch 2 thinks it has lost access to the root bridge and will declare itself the root and start sending its own BPDUs to switch 4. In classic STP, switch 4 would ignore switch 2's inferior BPDUs for the duration of the max age timer. Then, even after switch 4 reacts and starts forwarding BPDUs to switch 2, it would take an additional 30 seconds for them to start forwarding, a total of about 50 seconds. With Backbone Fast, you can cut out the max age timer countdown, shortening it to 30 seconds. Still too long. But in Rapid STP, the process should be much faster, basically immediate. Let's take a look by disabling switch to G00. Interface G00, shutdown. So let's go through these debug messages. Root port G00 going down. We become the root bridge. Received superior BPDU on G01. G01 is now root port. Synced G01 and generating TC trap for G01. So this is sub second convergence. Instead of the 50 seconds of classic STP or 30 seconds with backbone fast. So as you can see, Rapid STP doesn't need uplink fast and backbone fast. It has even better functionality built into the protocol itself. Okay, in this lab, we looked at the RSTP topology change process, including MAC flushing, TC BPDUs, and RSTP's rapid reconvergence without the need for uplink fast and backbone fast. That's all for this lab. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Before finishing this video, let me thank my JCNP level channel members. To become a member, please click the join button under the video. Thanks to Jonathan Makara, Velva Jacob, George, Nasir Chowdhury, Gustavo Macedo, Marcel Lord, Dragos Hernea, Zakib Shah, Mayor Salman, Vitaus194, Chance Carter56, Mark Jackson, Bold1C1U, Gerald Guiam, Fristas1207, Hector Hernandez, Roji Kuriakos, Arpad Konives, Five Feet, Owad Daniel Brown, Jose Alvarez, Hussein Yavuz, Samuel Tavares, Roger Bratseth, Kevin Hayes, Brian Grant, Georgi Gemajev, Cats for Life, Adelson Pereira, Farad69, Joyce Njoroge, Lucien Stoichitoyu, Madmark50484, Alexander Stratan, Hiago Bicalho, DMJ2, Dear Diso, Kurt Nell, Omid Farakesh, Steve Cox, Jasper Yim, Pedro Hartman, Tricky Mickey 123456, Ivano Capuano, Enigma G, Jefferson Steelflex, Burl Campbell, Abhishek Sahu, Toxic, Sinan Sarisinar, Gio, Daniel Andrade, Mike Crumby, Jairo Francisco, Dragos George, Philip Jovanovic, Random User 7547, Wagner Botelho, Mateusz Wzaszynski, Ruben Hernandez, Girish, Trevor Goldman, Gavin Paul Tech, Sunny Idigu, Chitsinde, Jeffrey C, Stephen White, Shami Ashmi, Haven, Edificer, Dragon J, dot 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 dot, Fio Fio Hein, Dimitro Lis, Makanana Sibeko, Mikhail Chapsky, Hemanth Jabalpuri, and Dariush D. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks to you and my other supporters, I am able to make these videos and release them for free on YouTube, so I really appreciate the support. Another great way to support the channel is to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video with others. So if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you did any of those. Thanks for watching.